Who's ready for some joint practices? I know I am. My name's Harrison Graham. You're watching Bears Now. A little preview of the next couple of days as the Bears are in Indianapolis to take on the Colts in a couple of joint practices Wednesday and Thursday night. I believe 6 o'clock Eastern uh, both nights, 5 Central time, they're going to practice. Then, of course, these two teams will face off in the preseason on Saturday in Indianapolis for a preseason game number two. And don't miss it. We're going to have coverage after each practice. Uh, Bears versus Colts practice breakdowns. I'm going to come in a little bit later on Wednesday, do a practice report. And then Thursday, we'll either do a second report or just do uh, maybe winners and losers coming out of the two joint practices. We'll see. But uh, video after each practice, so subscribe, turn on notifications. We're going to have you covered for all of that here on this show. All right, five players to watch on offense and on defense during joint practices. Let's start with Justin Fields, and not that, like, he has to prove anything in these practices. Like, at the end of the day, it's going to come down to how he plays in games. But I think just from a fan perspective, a media perspective, et cetera, we want to see more, right, from a selfish standpoint. Don't get me wrong. The DJ Moore and Khalil Herbert 50-plus yard uh, touchdowns, yards after catch, that was electric. But – Let's see Fields drop back and dissect the defense a little and see how he throws the football against a different team. Like, I'm tired of training camp practices, I'll be honest. Uh, I want to see them go up against other teams. Uh, he only threw three times the other day. I don't think that was by design. I don't think Luke Getze thought that a wide receiver screen to DJ Moore would go for 62 yards and a running back screen to Khalil Herbert would go for 56. You're obviously excited about those, but higher volume, different type of throws. Let's see how it goes, and uh, it should be fun to digest how uh, this offense goes up against the Colts' defense. Roshan Johnson at running back. I think the arrow is pointing up for this kid, and uh, he got some first-team reps on Monday's practice. Maybe he gets some uh, reps against the ones uh, in Indianapolis as well. I thought he ran hard against Tennessee. 24-yard run was the best run of the day by either team in that game. He was physical, breaking tackles. Want to see him get more opportunities as a pass catcher as well. And look, there could be a little discussion coming soon of could Roshan Johnson push for a bigger role? Right now he's RB3, but I think his upside as a three-down back is higher than Deontay Foreman's. I think he's a better pass catcher. I think he's better in pass protection. Foreman's experience coming off a good year, but – He's got a lot to gain here, Roshan Johnson does. I think if he goes out there, sets the tone with his physicality and his running style uh, against the Colts, I think that's going to turn some heads. And uh, if he also has a good game on Saturday, that really could go a long way in terms of what his role could be during his rookie campaign. I think we got to mention Bayless Jones Jr., right? Um, not a good start in the preseason opener for him. Muffed the second punt. That was uh, after he let the ball bounce again uh, in both punts. Uh, clock is ticking here for Bayless. Now, I do think he looks improved as a receiver. I love him as a kick returner. Like, I actually think he's a top five kick returner in the NFL. But you got to be a little bit more. Like, unless you're Devin Hester, a Hall of Fame returner, you need to do more, especially if you can't return punts, which I'm not sure Bayless can. I'm not sure you can trust him in that regard. Hester was so dynamic as both the punt and kick returner. It's like you didn't care what else he did. I mean, he could score and change a game every time a team kicked off or punted it. Bayless is good as a kick returner, but he's not to that level. Uh, I got to see him make some plays uh, this week and especially on Saturday in the game. What's your confidence level in Bayless Jones at this point? Scale of 1 to 100. 1 being, or hell, 0 to 100. 0, zero being no confidence at all. He's screwed. 100 being, ah, you're unbelievably confident for some reason. 42? Like, it's it's not high. Let me know. What is your confidence level in Bayless Jones? Cole Komet. And let me just preface this by saying I'm not worried about Cole Komet at all. I, I think we know what he brings to the table. He's a three-down tight end. He can block. He can catch. He's a red zone weapon. All of that stuff. It's been a little quiet around him, though, right? Like, he wasn't targeted in the preseason opener. There hasn't been a lot of, like, whoa, he – balled out in today's practice reports or anything like that. Now, at the end of the day, he's a tight end. Like, he's not a, like, headline type of player anyway. Like, he's not super flashy. So, I don't think there's anything to worry about. But him getting that extension, he's a player that this uh, regime believes in, obviously. So, uh, let's see him go out there and make some plays against this Colts defense uh, over the next couple of days of practice. So, uh, hopefully, uh, we see him do just that. 
before we jump to the next player here, Bet US place to go. And I told you guys before last week's game, I'll tell you again. Uh, preseason games, especially when you get into the later half of them, they can be a little dull at times. Not if you bet on them, though. You got plenty to watch for. Create an account with BetUS today and go bet on this preseason game. Chatsports.com slash bears. Promo code bear down gets you 125% deposit bonus. 100 bucks down, you're getting 125 for free. They'll match that bonus up to $500. It's a great deal. Colts, three and a half point favorites. Bears, uh, or the total over under is 40.5. Uh, I like the Bears. Matt Eberflus is 4-0 in the preseason as the head coach. Give me the Bears' money line in this one, and uh, I'll go over two. I could see Justin Fields and Anthony Richardson uh, creating some fireworks in this game. Darnell Wright. Uh, I thought the preseason opener was good. Uh, I want to see more. Give me uh, some phys good reports out of practice going up against a different defensive line, uh, and also... Uh, go out there and um, play well on Saturday. I think uh, he's off to a good start. Camp has been up and down, but the preseason opener, I think we saw his physicality and athleticism on display. Uh, and the Colts have a good D line. Maybe he gets some opportunities against a DeForest Buckner uh, on that defensive line. So uh, I hope he can hold his own. Uh, based on what we saw against Tennessee, I expect that to be the case. So uh, I think he's uh, in a good position and uh, trending in the right direction. Go to the defensive side of the ball here. Players to watch on defense during joint practices. Dominique Robinson, who has had a pretty good camp by all accounts. A little quiet against the Titans. I don't think he did anything wrong, per se, but uh, didn't pop like a Terrell Lewis or a Travis Gibson or uh, a couple others uh, did. Uh, go make some plays. Be a playmaker. Uh, it's a cr all of a sudden, it's kind of a crowded defensive end position uh, with uh, a couple of players emerging out of nowhere. So I uh, want to see Dom Rob make some plays. Javon Dexter Sr., who's had a bit of an up-and-down camp, uh, but uh, been more good than bad as of late. Uh, I did think Zach Pickens outplayed him in the preseason opener, though, but I think he's been improving, and I want to see more of that. I want to see a couple of tweets from uh, reporters say, oh, Javon Dexter just blew up a play. Like, Give me some of that, because his power and athleticism is fantastic. A couple things we're looking for. One, lower that pad, le pad level. He's playing with a little too high of pad level right now. Uh, and two, uh, continue to fire off the ball. It's been a point of emphasis. That was a struggle for him coming out of Florida. Part of it scheme-related, part of it on him. Uh, let's continue to time those snaps better uh, and uh, really uh, get upfield right away because uh, with his athletic profile, if he can fire off the ball, he can be an absolute game wrecker in this league. Who's the better rookie defensive tackle? Or maybe who will have the better rookie season? Is it, if it, is it Javon Dexter? If so, type GD. Is it Zach Pickens, if you think it's him, who had a sack against Tennessee, type ZP? Hopefully both are awesome, but uh, I still think Dexter has the better physical profile, so I'm going to type GP. Let's go to the linebacker position. Noah Sewell, who has had a really good camp, and uh, I think has been pushing Jack Sanborn just a little bit. I thought he played well against the Titans in the preseason opener, had four tackles, a sack, and a tackle for loss. Uh, carry that over. Make this a tough decision on Matt Eberflus, Allen Williams, and that defensive staff. Dave Braganzi, whoever, uh, is someone who can um, uh, potentially start or at least get snaps, right? Uh, I think he uh, is someone uh, to certainly watch for this week. Tyreek Stevenson, and I said it the other day, I'll say it again here. I think that outside CB2 job is just about done with Terrell Smith being sidelined as of late with an undisclosed injury, but... If he can go out there, put together a strong week and another good game, I think that is permanent. He's going to be that second starting outside corner. He brought the physicality. Seven tackles, all solo tackles, by the way, so he's not afraid to hit at all. Uh, had a TFL, had a breakup that was almost a pick six. Jumped a Will Levis out route and couldn't quite squeeze it. Uh, his coverage grade per PFF, 71.5. That's above average there as well. Uh, on the first play of the game, he got a little lost. Uh, in coverage, but after that he re responded and recovered really good. I thought, um, I've mentioned it a couple times, but I think the most impressive play he made in addition to almost jumping that route was identifying a wide receiver screen. Right off the snap, he's firing upfield, shedded his blocker, uh, and made the play for a tackle for loss. So I really, really like that. He brings that edge. He brings that energy at corner, and that's what I loved about him coming out of Miami. He plays with the swagger. He's not afraid to play the run game. He will. He's a willing tackler, uh, and uh, he plays physical. And that's why when he struggled at first early on in training camp, I was like, let's see the pads go on. Usually you don't need to say that about a corner, but – He's very physical, and I think since the pads have gone on, you've seen that on display. He's really, really performed well. 
Trevis Gibson here back to the defensive line. Listen, we almost counted him out, right, with that initial depth chart, him listed as four string, but the guy responded. We got to show Travis Gibson some love. I mean, you look at the PFF grades, and this checks out based on the eye test. Overall, 85, he was excellent. The pass rush was awesome. He was good against the run. Had eight pressures, a sack, three QB hits. Uh, biggest two weeks of Travis Gibson's career with the Bears coming up. I don't think there's any doubt about it because – I don't think he's locked up a roster spot just yet. I mean, there's competition with Rasheem Green, Terrell Lewis, uh, obviously Ngakwe and Demarcus Walker are going to be here. So he's really got to go out there and earn it. But uh, based on what we saw on uh, Saturday, if he repeats that this week in practice and uh, delivers in the next couple of preseason games, he's going to be in a good position uh, uh, to make this team. And uh, if he can bring some of that juice uh, in these joint practices, uh, that would go a long way for him, I think. So which player needs to perform most this week? You could say Travis Gibson. I'll throw Bayless Jones in there, too. I think if I had to pick one guy on each side of the ball, Bayless Jones on offense, Travis Gibson on defense. Two players firmly on the roster bubble, in my opinion, with Travis Gibson trending up, Bayless Jones trending down. They need to have big weeks. Hopefully they're able to do so. All right, that's our joint practices preview. We will be back on Wednesday and Thursday night. Uh, for uh, recap shows after those practices. Once we get all the reports and uh, nuggets from Indianapolis, we will react immediately. So subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss those videos. Appreciate you guys tuning in to Chicago Bears Now.